If y'all love black people, like this, comment, and share if y'all love black people. Wow, you just made a giant assumption about me based on my body size, which is not only fat phobic, but it's also pretty ableist. First, I just want to say that nobody owes you health in order to be worthy of respect. It's totally valid to have a chronic illness. It's valid if there are things that you have to focus on that come before health. Whatever your situation is, you don't owe anybody health to be worthy. And fat people do not owe you an explanation or justification as to why we're fat. But I do think it's important to talk about health outside the scope of body size. So I am going to share with you all some ways that I take care of my body and my health that are not related to body size. And again, there is no shame if there are people who don't or can't do these things. I take really good care of my mental health. I see my therapist every week. I make sure to take my medication every day. I practice skills that my therapist gives me. I spend time with my dog. I make sure to do self-care. And I focus on my eating disorder recovery. I take care of my physical health in a lot of ways too. I brush my teeth twice a day for the most part. I take a shower once or twice a day. I do short workouts two to three times a week setting goals for endurance and speed. I wear clothing that makes me feel comfortable. I practice my cooking skills. I make sure to eat lots of fruits and vegetables. And I set other physical health goals for myself, like drinking more water and getting more sleep. When I have room in my schedule, I do see my dietitian. That doesn't normally happen on a consistent basis. But when I do check in with her, she's always really happy about the progress that I've made and the kinds of foods and the amount of food that I've been eating. I take care of my social health. I'm on um, the friends part of Bumble to meet new people. I go to safe, socially distanced events on my college campus. I have a boyfriend who I see almost every day. I even have a friend that I made here on TikTok that I talk to on almost a daily basis. There was a time where I was counting calories and losing weight and restricting my food. That was actually when I hit rock bottom. I was so mentally unstable, I constantly wanted to self-unalive. I was deep in my eating disorder. And because I wasn't taking care of my mental or emotional needs, I really wasn't paying much attention to my physical needs. There are plenty of fat people that are healthier than thin people, and plenty of thin people that are healthier than fat people. Everybody deserves respect regardless of their body size or their health status. And all of your negative comments makes me think you might need to focus on your mental health and less on mine. Short or tall, fat or thin, doesn't matter. Love the body that you're in. However, love yourself enough to take care of that body and try to be as healthy as possible. We need to talk about this. New Zealand was recently recognized as the first country to approve paid maternity leave for a woman having a miscarriage. And that was celebrated globally. But did you know New Zealand wasn't the first country to approve paid maternity leave after a miscarriage? The Philippines and India are two countries who've also made this law legal, yet we have never heard anything about this. As a society, we need to do better. All right, so I wanted to make a series of videos about how misogyny affects different races of women. A lot of people fail to understand how the intersection of race and gender can manifest in different forms of oppression. For example, East Asian women are often objectified through infantilization. Their fetishization often stems from stereotypes, either that they are submissive or whatever, or that they are a threat that needs to be subdued, which is rooted in yellow peril propaganda is often encouraged by the depiction of East Asian women in media like anime. I know Eileen has made some very informative videos on this that I've learned a lot from, so go check them out on TikTok at Bobakami. My friend Faith um, has also made some very good statements on this as well. I know they love political TikTok, but it's at Faith Hump on Twitter if you want to follow them as well. Part two is coming up in a couple hours. 
I've been involved in the intersectional feminist community for around five years now. It's an overwhelmingly left-leaning, progressive, and trans-inclusive community. And yet, I have never, not once ever, not one single time ever heard anyone ever say, cis women can't call themselves women. This would be completely antithetical to our belief in respecting people's gender identities. You are more than welcome to call yourself a woman, unless what this is actually about is invalidating trans women. In which case, it never was about your womanhood. Thank you so much for this question. I get this all the time. People want to know, well, isn't there a point at which you are too overweight and you do need to lose weight for your health? To which I say, no, and here's why. It boils down to the fact that weight is not a behavior. Moving your body, eating healthy foods like fiber-rich foods and vegetables, these are health-promoting behaviors and can decrease things like risk of mortality, etc., without weight loss being the goal. Essentially, you don't have to lose weight in order to be healthier. Then you have to look at weight stigma. Yes, it exists in the medical field. The first thing is that people who live in larger bodies are less likely to go to the doctor because guess what? They're constantly being told to lose weight and it's very uncomfortable for them. So that alone leads to negative health outcomes. It's also really lazy medical advice. There's been many studies to show that joint pain in people with larger bodies has nothing to do with the weight. But again, it's an easy scapegoat. Comment below if you want me to break down some studies for you. It's way too much information to post in one minute. So the moral of the story here, the main point I want to get across is before you start judging yourself or somebody else um, on their health because of the size of their body and the way you perceive health because of the size of their body, remember that it is not that simple. Health is complex and can be defined in a variety of ways based on a person's life and experiences. And people can experience health at a huge range of body sizes. It's so important that we respect the fact that body diversity exists and we stop trying to force everyone, including ourselves, to adhere to this very, very narrow view of health that is ultimately hurting us. If you stuck around this far, thanks for watching. I hope you give me a follow if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. The first insult they always run to is, I bet that's why she's single now. Be prepared. Listen, because it's actually men who are terrified of ending up old and alone. So I'm your local 30-year-old TikTok cousin. And the older you get, I promise you, you will realize that men are the ones who are terrified of being single for a couple of reasons. Most men, not college freshmen, but men, most of them do not want to be the bachelor of their friend group because what that means to them is that all these women were desperate to be wives and you couldn't convince a single one of us that you would make a good husband. Their egos literally can't handle that. Also, as we get older, we realize that all of the things that make a house a home, all of the things that make life just more comfortable, cozy, and inviting are things that women are responsible for. Take a single man and a single woman in their late 30s. Go to both of their houses during the holidays. And we'll see whose life looks more like a struggle because they don't have a partner. I promise you, it's the men who are terrified of ending up old and alone. And that's why they use that as an insult for us. Women are sick of it. We're tired of seeing these beta males walking around acting. Did your high school history teacher just show you reruns of Leave it to Beaver and tell you that it was a documentary? Like, is that where this confusion is coming from? Like, what about the 50s and 60s are you nostalgic for? Is it being unable to get a credit card or a mortgage without your husband or your father signing off? Is it the way that domestic violence cases were transferred from criminal court to family court so that husbands couldn't be charged and would only face minor civil penalties? Is it the way that marital rape was legal until 1993? Do you miss the good old days when being regularly beaten by your husband wasn't considered valid grounds for divorce? Look, babe, it's a free country. If misogyny and milkshakes are your thing, enjoy, but leave the rest of us out of it. Interesting reaction. A logical fallacy is a flaw in the structure of an argument. Unfortunately, the internet, politics, and even the news are frequently used as an abuse of logical fallacies. By being able to properly identify logical fallacy, you can call people on their bullshit. Let's talk about the straw man fallacy. The straw man fallacy is exactly what it sounds like when someone misrepresents your argument and then attacks that decoy. It's the one often used by people who argue that PC culture has gone too far. You might experience this if you say, I don't think it's appropriate that we have sombreros and fake mustaches at our Cinco de Mayo celebration. And then Chad says, Oh, so Megan's decided we're not allowed to have any fun at the party. Straw man arguments are meant to shame you and make you feel insecure about speaking up. 
but really it's just the other person showing you that they have no defense against your actual point. So if you encounter a straw man argument, you can reply, No Chad, that's not what I said. I just think we can have fun without having to employ racial stereotypes. Bye Chad. Have fun. Here's the deal. The answer is yes, but the answer is no, not in that way. But the answer is yes. So ask me about, so the answer is yes, but the answer is also no. So which the answer you're looking for is yes, but also no. Hi, I am looking for someone to help me lose weight. Hi, I am not a dietitian who promotes weight loss typically. Can you tell me why you want to lose weight? My doctor says my diabetes will be easier to control. If you are having trouble with controlling your diabetes, I am happy to provide an UTR doc You can get better control without actively losing weight. Why are you so against weight loss though? There is lots of evidence that repeated dieting and weight cycling does more body harm than good. It also can lead to disordered eating behaviors and mindset. I focus on helping you reach your health goals without restricting calories. 